Okay, so this one says graphing a square root function, problem type one. And in all of the problems, they say this in Alex, use the leftmost point and three additional points, okay? How are you gonna figure out what the heck is the leftmost point, okay? It's the same kind of thing like you do to find the center of the vertex for the absolute values. So you take whatever's on the inside and you set it equal to zero and that will give you your leftmost point. If it happens to be a rightmost point, it's the same thing, set the inside equal to zero, okay? So if I take the inside, what's on the inside of the square root there? X minus six. X minus six. And you know what, to be honest, what do we usually do? When we talk about the domain of, of square roots, what do we normally write here? We don't write equals, what do we normally write? Whenever we were doing the domain of square roots, we would take the inside and set it greater than or equal to zero, wouldn't we? Remember that? So if I did that here, my inside is, what'd you say? I said negative six, you asked me what was in there. Uh-huh, what is inside the square root? X. Is it X minus six or just X? Just X. Right, notice where the little house oh, stops, okay, okay, right? Okay, okay. So the inside is only the X. Now this one's nice because it's already by itself, right? So I already know which number to use. I'm gonna have to use zero. But then what numbers do I pick after that? Well remember, x has to be greater than zero. So when you start picking your numbers, pick numbers that are bigger than zero. Now another thing you want to do, let me see what this calculator does. Okay, good, it does does it. Pick whatever you want then, because your calculator is nice. <laughs> you don't have to, you wanna pick three? Give me two more. Five. Five, what else? Six. Six, okay. Now if I type all these in my calculator, so square root of zero and then outside the square root, I'm gonna put the minus six. Right? Does that look like this, but with the zero plugged in? Yep. So when I hit enter, it just says negative six. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for three. So square root of three, get out of the house, and then minus six. Notice what it did. It just gave me square root of three minus six. It cannot simplify that. And look at what happens if I hit the double arrow to give me a decimal. That is an ugly decimal. And you cannot round, because if you round, it's gonna be off a little bit, right? So in Alex, this is where you're definitely one and gonna use that button that has the little X, and you type in the coordinates. And if your calculator told you square root of three minus six, that's what you have to type in for the Y spot. And it's gonna let you type that in for Alex. It will, mm-hmm. With the square root and With all the that? square root and all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Then the same thing for the five. If I do second square root five, and then I put a minus six, it gives me that. So it's stuck like that. And it's going to do the same thing with the six. Now there is a way to get actual numbers and not these funny numbers. I don't know if you want to know that or not. I mean, that's something you, <laughs> you don't tell us. You gonna tell us? I like to have regular numbers, not these weird numbers. <laughs> okay, so so think of the squares. If you start with zero, what is the next square? What zero times zero is zero. What's one times one? One. What's two times two? Four. What is three times three? Nine. Nine. And that's my leftmost spot and then three other points, right? Now, all I would have to do to figure out what I need for these three points is set the inside equal to each and every one of these guys, okay? Which is nice because the inside is just X, right? So X would have to equal one, X would have to equal four, 
and x would have to equal 9. Now watch what happens when I plug these numbers in the calculator. Because they're nice little roots, oops, that's not right. I get a nice little number like negative 5. And a nice little number like negative 4. And a nice little number like negative 3, right? And those you can graph. So you can choose not to graph these and graph these other ones instead. All right, go back over how we got the 0, 1, 4, and 9 again. What did we do? This is 0 times 0, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, and 3 times 3. We're just basically finding perfect squares. Who Numbers who that when I take the square root of it, it'll come out to a nice number. That's what we're trying to do here. So we just came up with those numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the perfect squares. Those are the perfect squares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can use these numbers for all the problems. It's just going to get really weird when you don't have x all by itself under the square root. Okay? It's just going to be really weird. So here I can graph it with this information. I am going to graph 0 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to graph 1 and negative 5, 2, 3, 4, and negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and negative 3. And it looks like a curve like this. You cannot pick x values that are less than 0, right? When you're doing square roots, you cannot pick x values that are less than 0 because of your domain. Now, I can do the same thing for this one, but there's a problem. You basically have to do a bunch of side work to figure out what is gonna go in your chart. A lot of side work. So what I need to do is if I want perfect squares here, I'm gonna have to take that inside and equal it to zero. I'm gonna have to take that inside and equal to the next perfect square, the inside equal to the next perfect square, and then the inside equal to the last perfect square. So what x value will you get here when you solve that equation? Negative 2. Mm -hmm. What x value will you come up with here? Negative 1. And what x value will you come up with here? Positive 2. And what x value will you come up with here? Positive 7. Positive 7. So those are the numbers I need to use. Negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 7. And when you plug them in, it's going to come out to a nice number. Because we already know that inside the square root, after I add 2, I'm going to get 0, or 1, or 4, or 9. And those are perfect squares. So let's see. Square root of negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Square root of negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 2 plus 2 turns out to be 2. And square root of 7 plus 2 turns out to be 3. So if I graph this, One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, one, two, three. So negative two and zero, negative one and one, two and two, and then seven and three. And then you have a little curvy thing. So when you're doing that, you're not going to have a starting point. You're going to have all four points on that line. You have to have, right. 
because you have to have the leftmost point and then three additional ones after that which is why we're doing all four of these guys zero for the leftmost and then one four nine just so that they're pretty okay i don't remember let me turn it real quick yeah you still have more of the same thing on the next page it'll have a different name but it's still the same thing because this one was graphing a square root function problem type one right on the next side we have graphing a square root function but problem type two okay and so i have a few examples here there's more problem type three but they're all the same and there's a whole bunch so i have one two three four five six seven eight different problems and we're all doing the exact same thing okay it's just because they look different the numbers are going to be different right but it's the same exact thing take the inside and equal it to zero take the inside equal it to one take the inside equal it to four take the inside equal it to nine all the perfect So here, what x value will you get? Uh, negative 1. Here, what x value will you get? Uh, negative 1 minus 1, negative 0. Mm -hmm. right. Here, what x value will you get? Uh, 3. And here, what x value will you get? Uh, 8. Mm -hmm. And so then those are my x's. I got negative 1, 0, 3, and 8. It's a longer equation, but you're just plugging it in. So square root of negative one plus one, and on the outside, minus three. And I get negative three. Then I'm gonna do square root of zero plus one, and on the outside, minus three. Square root of three plus one, on the outside, minus three. And then square root of 8 plus 1 on the outside minus 3. I get 0. And that's it. Just graph it. Oh, this one's got a lot of... Oh, no, it's okay. My y values are negative, not my x's. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 2, 3. So negative one and negative three, zero and negative two, one, two, three, and negative one, and then eight and zero. And you see how it's doing a little curve, right? Okay. I drew that weird, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> so this, literally, this is the hard part, okay? Is knowing that you're, when you're doing square roots, make sure the inside equals those perfect squares okay so here if i do that i get positive one if i do this i get positive two if i do this i get positive five and if i do that i get positive ten so i have one two five and ten now that's not a cube root, that's 3 times the square root. So do 3 square root 1 minus 1. This is going to be 3, 6, and 9. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, okay. So one and zero, two and three, three, four, five, and six. So five and six, 
and then 10, this is 10, and 9, 7, 8, 9. And it's still a curvy, it's just really, really fat, right? It's not real narrow like these other ones, it's real wide. And again, that has to do with that 3. That 3 made it really, really wide. But once you have this little trick down, they're all easy. I mean, I have like a whole bunch more and they're all the same thing. The exact same thing. Here. What am I setting equal to 0, 1, 4, and 9? X minus 5. No. Ah, uh, uh, X. Uh -huh. X equal to 0. Got to figure out where the bar stops. Bar stop. Right. The only thing under the bar is X. So then I don't even need to solve anything. Yeah, I already know right. what's in my chart. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be negative 5. That's going to be negative 3, negative 1, and 1. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I got 0 and negative 5, 1 and negative 3, 4 and negative 1, and then 9 and positive 1. And so again, it does the little curve thing. Put your line over that whole equation, it's going to be wrong. Mm hmm. Because then you're going to be using the wrong x values. Right. Mm hmm. So, this is the other problem type. But notice when we did one and two, there was nothing different. All we were doing was the same thing, setting the inside 0, 1, 4, 9, and then plugging them in. It's the exact same thing. The only thing is, is that there's the insides are weird. So you take this inside and equal it to 0. What are you going to get? Uh, take away the negative 2. Mm -hmm. And then negative 2x. And then divide it by 2. You're going to get negative 1. Mm -hmm. So that's my first x value. Then what happens if I take it and I equal it to 1? You don't get 1, correct? Mm, I don't Negative know. 1. Neg Negative nope, one. not even that. Okay. Negative 1 half. half. Negative 1 half. So that's interesting, Point right? 0.5? Mm-hmm, you could do 0.5. Okay. I forgot you like numbers though, right? It don't matter. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then let's see the next one. We got to do four. So we get positive one, and then the last one, equal it to nine. We have seven seconds. Mm hmm. Or three and a half. Same thing. Mm hmm. And then just plug them all in. So let's see what that's going to look like. Square root of 2 parentheses negative 1 close the parentheses plus 2. So notice when I'm plugging in my x, I'm going to multiply it by something. I had to put it in parentheses, right? So that that 2 could be multiplied by my x yeah. and then add 2. Okay. And I get 0. Then now I'm going to do the same thing again, square root of 2 parentheses negative 0 0.5 plus 2. I get 1. Oh, okay. Okay. Square root of 2 parentheses 1 plus 2. And I get 2. Square root of 2 parentheses 3.5 plus 2. And I get 3. And these, you can use that graph 
right? And it'll put the little dots for you. One, two, one, two, three, four. So negative one and zero, negative 1.5 and one, which is like in the middle there, one and two, and then three and a half and three. And so it gives you the little curve. It's just really tiny in there. Same thing here. I may just speed through the rest of it because I have like a whole bunch more. But um, what am I setting equal to zero, one, four, just a and nine? Ways. Correct. So here I'm going to get zero. Here I'm going to get um, negative one half. I'm going to get negative two. And here I'm going to get negative. 4.5. So when I graph, well, I guess I can make my chart, right? 0, negative 0.5, negative 2, negative 4.5. Be careful because the 2 is not inside the house, right? Yes, ma'am. So negative 2, parentheses, 0, close the parentheses, and then I have to go outside to do the plus 2, okay? And I get 2. So zero and two. Then now I'm gonna do 0.5. So square root negative two times negative 0 0.5, get out, plus two, I get three. So negative 0.5 is actually right here in the middle. And then I gotta go up three, which is right there. Then now square root negative 2 times negative 2, and on the outside, plus 2. I get 4. So negative 2 and 4. And then now square root of negative 2, parentheses, negative 4.5, outside, plus 2. And I get 5. So that's negative 4, negative 5, negative 4.5 is in the middle, but I got to go up to 5. Now, which one did I start with? I started with 0, 2, right? Yes, ma'am. So that means I need to start here and draw the little curve going that way. And on this problem, I didn't write it, but it would have said in the notes, use the rightmost point and three additional. Okay, so that one would have had that comment and it would have changed it from leftmost to rightmost just because they know that it's gonna go the other way around. And it's supposed to be curvy, but I drew it kind of weird there. Okay, so the same thing is for all of these. If we do our chart, um, oh my gosh, my thing's coming out. My pen's running out of ink. I'll just keep using blue now. Okay, so if I set that equal to zero, I'm gonna get two. If I set that equal to one, I'm gonna get three. Four will give me six. Nine will give me 11. And then I plug them in. So 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. And then you plug them in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 2 and 0, 3 and negative 2, 6 and negative 4 and then 11 and negative 6 and so you get that little curve going in that direction but I'm doing the same thing I took this and equaled it to 0 I just knew it was going to be 2 I took this equaled it to 1 but when you add you get 3 right I took that equal to 4 when you add it you get 6 
and then I took it and I equaled 9, but when you add it, you get 11. And then all I did was plug each one of those in there, okay? It's the same thing. I'm just trying to kind of go faster just so that you can see. It didn't even matter. Look at all these graphs. They look all going all every which way, right? But it really didn't matter. The trick lied in setting your insides equal to that, and then it all just works itself out, okay? You just do the math and plot the points. This one's weird, <laughs> right? The inside is all of that weird stuff, okay? So let's really work on how to get those x values in that chart. So we have 1 half x plus 6 equal to 0 to start. So if I minus the 6, I get negative 6 over here. But how do I get rid of the 1 half? You gotta subtract 1 half. No, because it's not added. I mean divide 1 half. Uh-huh. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 1 half? 2 over 1. Mm-hmm. So if I multiply by 2 over 1 here and by 2 over 1 there, this cancels out. I get x. And what do I get over there? Uh, 12. Mm -hmm. Almost. Negative, negative 12. Negative 12. Negative 12. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the negative. So okay. that's my first guy. Right. Now if I do the same thing but equal it to 1. So when I minus the 6, I'm going to get negative 5. And when I multiply by 2, get negative, 10. negative 10. So there's my next guy. Then if I take that and I equal it to 4, I minus that over. Times it by 2, I will get negative 4. And then finally, the last guy. So if I minus the 6 over, I actually get a positive now, right? 3. And then when I multiply by 2, I, get six. Mm -hmm, I will get a positive 6. So I get 6. And then if I plug those in, let's see, that's half of 12 is 6, so that's 0. Half of negative 10 is negative 5, so that's 1. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, plus 6 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. Half of 6 is 3, 3 plus 6 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. You can use a calculator, I just so did it fast. So you're still going to find the square root of whatever that number uh -huh. is? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, you so still got to plug these in and, and so figure all that out. Yeah, then you're going to get your square root. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, these are negatives, so I definitely need to put the line over there because I have a lot of negatives. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are all over the place, right? But we get negative 12 and 0, negative 10 and 1, negative 4 and 2, and then 6 and 3. And so again, it's a curve, but it's really, really long, right? So it really doesn't matter what the curve is going to look like. If you do this little trick, you'll get everybody you need in order to graph it. See, this one says rightmost, right? It doesn't matter whether it says leftmost or rightmost. It's still the same steps. But how do you solve that? Uh, make them equivalent to 0, 1, 4, and 9. Mm -hmm. And then how do I solve the first one? Get x by itself? Sure. So well, what do I do? Subtract 1. Mm -hmm. From both sides. And then what do I have? Uh, negative x equals negative 1. Uh -huh. Divide by negative x or 1. Negative 1, negative one uh, yeah. whatever the number is. Yes, mm -hmm. And then you get positive one. Yep. And that's my first guy in the chart. Now when I do this one, it's the same two steps, just this side's going to be different, right? Mm -hmm. So you got zero. What's zero divided by a negative one? Zero. Still zero. Yeah. And then here, we get three. So it ends up being negative three. Yeah. Here we get eight and it turns to negative 8. And so then let's see what happens when we graph this.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when I plug in one, I'm gonna get zero. When I plug in zero, I'm gonna get three. When I plug in negative three, I'm going to get six, I think. Let me see, three square root, one minus a negative three in parentheses. Yeah, six. That'll be nine, three times three is nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, 1 and 0, 0 and 3, negative 3 and 6, negative 8 and 9. And which one did I start off with? 1 and 0. Uh-huh. So then it starts here and it goes that way. I didn't even hit the line, the dots, but whatever. <laughs> Alex will just, you just click the button and Alex will draw it. Okay, so that's literally, I mean, you got gobs and gobs and gobs of square roots to graph and it's the same trick for all of them so even though there's three or four different topics it's the same thing for all of them okay now graphing a cube root function and so this one has these details here too it says use one point where it literally tells you this use one point where this is equal to zero and then two points to the left and two points to the right then click the graph icon. So it tells you exactly what values it wants you to put in the chart. I just don't know what to start with, so I gotta go figure out how do I solve this. So if I take that expression there, or that equation, and I solve it, the only way to get rid of a square root, or root, any kind of root, is to apply the same kind of power, the same kind of exponent. So if this is a cube root, then what I want to do is I want to apply a cube exponent on both sides. Remember equations, you have to do the same thing on both sides, right? So that's going to take the little house off and it's just going to give me x plus 4. But what is 0 times 0 times 0? Zero? 0. 0. And I'm not done, I have to keep going. So what happens if I minus 4 on both sides? I get x equals to? Negative 4. Negative 4. Now I like to see my graph paper just to figure out who's left and who's right. But if I go one, two, three, four, who is to the left of negative four? Negative and then who is to the right of negative four? Negative three. Negative three. And now I know which x values to plug in. All right, question. Oh, I don't know. Because how many did it say I had to go to the left? Uh, you got two points to two the Two to the left. And I only did one, didn't so I? you need five. Six, so I need negative six, and I also need one more going this way. Negative, I mean positive two. No, negative two. Negative two. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you need two on each side. So when you did the cube, mm -hmm. and you canceled out your the little root, your little root, uh -huh. your cube. Why didn't you take that cube and do anything with that four? Why did the four stay the same? Why didn't it go to twelve? Because the four is inside the cube root, and this cube. It's like saying this. Okay, so say you had that half a bracket that don't go over the top of that four. Then that would be different because I would have you... to move the four first before I could cube each side. Oh, so then you'd have to move it and do that and then cube it. Uh -huh. Like, look at this problem, huh? It has a five. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm and talking And notice about. over here what they're telling me to do. They're Once. not even talking about the five. They're telling me just worry about the root part equal to zero. What don't is... worry about these extra terms. You're only going to do the root part equal to zero. So you have to pay attention to those directions. So what's that say? One point where, uh, where three, where the cube root of it's x It's cube root of x and zero. then the plus five on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it says one point where this happens and then two to the left and two to the right. Just like these directions. 
but they're telling you exactly what to use yeah, don't as mess the center. With the five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't even mess yeah. with the five. So you'll still plug in your zero, one, four, nine, and all that. No, in. those are on square roots. Whenever you're graphing the square roots and they're not telling you anything, that's when you do the zero, one, four, nine. Notice on all these problems, they didn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. All they say is do the leftmost or the rightmost right point right. and three more. Okay. Those directions is when you do the zero, one, four, nine. Okay. So when they say leftmost or rightmost point and three additional, that's when you do this. And those are all for square roots, not cube roots. Square roots only. Here we're doing something totally new, which is cube roots. And they have specific directions on what they want in your chart. Okay? So let me see. If I plug in these things, that is a cube root. So three index. And then I'm going to do negative five plus four. I get negative one. Then cube root again. Negative four plus four. And then cube root again, and negative three plus four. Oops. And then plug in negative six. Uh oh, that didn't come out right. Hmm. This one wasn't nice. Although we did use. Look at what happened when I put in my calculator. Wow. You can't put that in the computer. Yeah, you can't put that in the computer. So then just leave this alone the way it was. Cube root. I think the only thing you could do is simplify that and say the cube root of negative 2. Now on my paper, because I'm graphing by hand, you're not. You're going to click the buttons. But on my paper, I'm going to say that's about negative 1.3, just so that I can draw it, okay? But for you, on a computer, you're going to hit that little X box, right? And then when it opens up the coordinates, you're going to have to type in negative 6 for the X coordinate, and then you're going to have to type the cube root of negative 2 for the Y coordinate. And it'll plot the point where it's supposed to go. It's a little weird. Hopefully that doesn't happen with negative 2, but you never know. Negative 2 plus 4. Yep, it happened again. So here though, when you add negative 2 and 4, you get the cube root of positive 2, which is approximately positive 1.3. So I'm going to graph them about 1.3, negative 1.3. But in the computer, you're going to have to type in the box, negative 2 I plugged in, and the only thing I could do was the inside and get cube root of 2. It'll plot it for you, okay? But for me, I'm going to go negative 5 and negative 1, negative 4 and 0, negative 3 and 1, negative 6, and about negative 1.3. So negative 1 and a third, but right there. Then negative two and positive one and a third. So about right there. And notice how it's, it's kind of like an S, right? This part curves this way and this part curves that way. You don't have to worry about it. You click the button and it'll draw the little curvies. But for me, I have to draw them correctly. So same thing for this one here. If I take the cube root of x and I equal it to 0 like it tells me to, if I cube this side and I cube that side, here it just takes the house off, so I just have what's inside left. But here, what's 0 times 0 times 0? 0. 0. So then I know I'm going to use 0. And then what are two points to the left of zero? Positive one. That's to the right of zero. Here's zero in the middle. To the left. To the left. Negative one. Negative one and negative two, two. maybe. Yep. And then to the right. Positive one and positive two. Mm-hmm. And so you just plug all those in. 
So here I'm going to get 5. Here I'm actually going to get 4. Here it's going to do something weird. It's not going to simplify it for me. So I typed it in the calculator, but the calculator gives me that decimal again. So on your Alex, you're going to literally leave it like this. But for me, on my paper, I'm going to say that's about 3.7. Cube root of 1 plus 5 is 6. Cube root of 2 plus 5. Again, another weird decimal, right? So you leave it like this. But for me, I'm going to have to use that 6 point something number. Just so that I know where to draw it when I'm drawing it on paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so zero and five. One, two, three, four, five. Negative one and four. Negative two and negative two and three point seven. So one, two, three, and a little bit more. 1 and 6, 2 and 6 and a little bit more. And so again, it's doing that S thing. It's going in that direction. Just do not put an Alex, negative 2 and then 3.7, right? You cannot use the approximations in Alex. You have to use the exact value inside Alex. Only two more. Yay. Okay. This one's harder than the last one. <laughs> so this one's graphing a piecewise function. And then it'll ask you, is it continuous or not? So for the first part, it's gonna ask you to graph it. And then for the second part, it's gonna ask you, is it continuous? And you literally click yes or no, okay? Now this is easier to graph on paper than it is to graph on Alex, which is really the opposite of everything we've been doing so far. Everything you've been doing so far, you just plug in the points and click the graph and it does it for you, right? This one is way more complicated, okay? So the, what you're going to do here is, oh, it's so super confusing. And I have to remember if I can remember this correctly. Remember, this is a piecewise function. So you're going to have like stuff with an open dot, a closed dot, and then lines going this way and that way and all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. But how do you do that in the Alex program? The first thing you need to do is write down the two different equations. So I've got this one and it's gonna have its chart, and then I have this one, the bottom equation, with its chart, okay? Where you get the y equals the two, oh, you just put up for the fx. Uh-huh, f of x, x is y. Okay, you're mm -hmm. just taking a y, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Just cause that's the easier notation for me. Now you have to pay attention to these parameters. For the top function, this one here, I am only allowed to use x's that are less than 2. However, you also have to use 2. You just have to remember it's going to have an open dot because of that no bar. Okay? But I do want to see, like, where is it going? Okay? And I want to know where to put that open, that open dot. Okay? So you do have to plug in 2. You just have to remember that it's going to have an open dot there. Okay? Everything else has regular dots. It's only the guys without the bar that have you have to put the open dot. Okay? Everybody else is regular. So here, I'm going to use 2, but then I have to use x's that are less than 2. So like 0, right? Is 0 less than 2? Okay. 1 is less than 2. Mm -hmm. You could have used 1 as well. 
and then um, anything that's less than two is a good. Then now for here, I'm going to use two, but then this one's going to have a solid dot, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, because it's a notation with the equals two. Mm -hmm. So then now what we're going to do is find another number, but now we have to pick x greater than 2. So pick a number that's greater than 2. 3. Three. And then you just plug them into the equations to find the y coordinates. So, excuse me, if I plug 2 into here, I get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. And if I plug in zero, I get zero plus three, three, which is three. Over here, if I plug in two, two minus three, negative one. Negative one. And if I plug in three minus three, I get zero. Now, the way you graph it in the computer is so weird. So I'm gonna try to explain this. So I'm gonna draw my graph paper, just like you have in Alex already. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw this, um, this line here. And you're just going to use the pencil, okay? So you're going to grab the little pencil. I'm going to try to draw a pencil, but you get the idea, right? Grab the little pencil icon and then plot those first two points, 2, negative 1, and zero three and so what that's going to do is two and negative one it's going to put a little little tiny dot there and zero and three and it's going to put a little tiny dot there then what you're going to do is you're going to click on the line icon and then you're going to click on two negative one and zero three so once you click that line icon, you're gonna have to actually click on these dots and it'll draw the line for you, okay? But the dots are easier to click on if you already have plotted them with a the pencil, okay? Once you have this line, this is where it gets really weird. You're gonna have to click on the scissor icon Because you're, it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna do this. It's gonna graph that line, isn't it? It's gonna have the line and it's gonna have it the whole way across, isn't it? And you can't have it the whole way across because you can only have where x is less than two. Well, here's two, isn't it? If I can only have where x is less than two, then I should only be having this side of the graph and not the other side, right? So you're gonna have to cut. Well, you don't really cut, you just click. <laughs> you're gonna click on two, negative one, right there. Once you do that, it cuts it, but you don't really, I don't think, I think maybe it makes like a little line or something to indicate that you've made a cut there, but it doesn't really do anything, okay? After that, you're going to have to click the eraser button Oh, I did that wrong, but whatever. It's like a little trapezoid, right? <laughs> so click the eraser and then click on um, the right side of the line. Because remember, you want to keep where x is less than 2. You're trying to get rid of the part where x is greater than 2. You want to keep this condition. So if this is 2, I want to keep this, which means I only need to delete that. So when you go into Alex and you grab that eraser, make sure you don't delete the wrong thing, otherwise you got to start all over again. Okay? So once I made my little cut there, I'm going to grab the eraser and I'm going to click this part. And what it's going to do is it's going to erase that spot right there. Okay? Then you can go and you can click on the open dot, the open dot button, and um, 
click on your point again, 2, negative 1. And once you click right there, the graph is going to put an open dot right there. Do you see how many steps this is? I could have graphed it really easy a long time ago, but <laughs> that's a lot of steps just to get half of the graph because I've only been doing this one. Okay? So you've got to do the points you get. you got to click on those points with the, with the line function so that it draws the whole line. Then you got to cut it at the two. And then you got to delete the correct portion. And then you got to put the correct endpoint on it. Okay? Oh, uh, you're talking about with the open because the open, of the notation with because the of this. Band. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do a different color because I'm going to have to write the steps here instead of over there. Um, but I'm going to do it in purple. Or maybe I'll do it in blue. So now I'm going to do this one here. Okay. So again, the first step is going to be to grab the little pencil here. And then you're going to um, plot these two points. Two, negative one, and three, zero. So two, negative one, it's going to put a little marker right there. And then three, zero is going to put a little marker right here. Okay. Then I'm going to get the line function. And I'm going to click on my dots. So I'm going to click here, click here, and when I do that, it's automatically going to draw the big line. Right. Okay. But then you're going to have to get the scissors. The scissors. <laughs> and then click on this guy here that's got the dot, right? So yep. click on that point again. So it's going to cut it. Then you have to click on the eraser. And you're going to erase the bottom, exactly. You already have something for this side, right? Yeah, yeah. So you need to get rid of this side. Then you got to put the point in. So this one is a solid dot, right? Yeah. So make sure you click on solid dot and then put it there and it's going to actually turn it into a solid dot, right? And so is Alex going to make that wrong now because you just filled in an nope. open dot? Nope, it's correct. Because I had to fill in the open dot. <laughs> the only thing I have to tell you to be careful with is if this one had the closed dot and that one had the open dot, when you do it in Alex in that order and you put the solid dot there first and then you click on the open dot and put the open dot there second, it's going to override whatever you did second. However, in real life, should it be open? If it was solid there first, and then the other one is yeah, open, open, isn't it still second. filled in? Yeah, it's still right? filled in. So you have to remember that. Don't put that open dot if that's your second move to make. Okay. If it's already filled, don't click the open dot and put it there because it's going to make it open. And it shouldn't be. It should be filled in because of the other guy. Okay. So be careful. Uh, I see what you're saying because you got this. So you're saying yeah. if you had the if you the, had solid the, first, yeah, the equal to equal to first, and then you're trying to you do the other one, right? And, and then you're trying now to you got that open circle because mm -hmm. it should be solid. It still should be solid. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna click on there? Nothing. You don't click the dot. Don't don't. Just fill it. Leave it line. alone. Just put the other line. Make your cuts. Erase, and then that's it. It right, should stay cool. solid. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 And then this is the graph. And then the question is: Is it continuous? Continuous in what way? Just shoot now? It does it. Well, I think right now your definition of continuous before calculus is can you start at the left side of the graph and graph the whole thing without picking up your pencil? That's literally the definition. <laughs> so could I? I would go here. Since that's solid, I could just keep continuing, yeah, keep right? Yeah, it's continuous. So it is continuous. What is not continuous is if there's a hole. So if I had like this, just say I had that. You can draw up to here, but then there's something missing there. Yeah. So you'd have to pick up your pencil and go on the other side and then keep drawing. That's not continuous, okay? And this either. If you had like part of it up here and then the other part down there, that's definitely not continuous, right? You have to like stop and then go down here and continue. Okay. I'm going to erase these, but they're in the video. If you press play, they'll still be there. But All 
Okay, so this one's just weird because you have to do all this cutting and erasing and junk, okay? So just try that one, practice it. Um, as long as you can draw it on your paper on the test, you'll be fine, okay? But I know the functionality in Alex is really weird on this one, okay? Okay, the last question is this one, and it's like a breeze compared to all that <laughs> cutting and erasing stuff, okay? So here it says, find the domain and range, and it gives you the graph, and it tells you the coordinates of the vertex. So that little guy right there, we know is 2, negative 4. And so it wants to know the domain and the range. Look at these arrows. How far, remember domain. Domain is left to right. How far left does this graph go? It's got that arrow there. What does that mean? I mean that means it's continuing. That means it's going, right? It's going up and to the left forever. So if it's going to the left little by little by little, but forever, where does it end up? It yeah. just keeps going, just keep going, going, and going, going and going and going yeah. and going and going. Where is it going to? Where's that x value going to? Negative, negative infinity. Okay, if it just keeps going, it's going to go to infinity, just whether it's negative or positive. And since I'm talking about left motion, I'm talking about negative infinity, right? Then how far right does it go? It's going forever, right? Yeah. But it's going to the right, which is what? Positive positive infinity. Now the range is from the bottom to the top, right? Mm -hmm. So how far low is my graph? Well, negative four? Correct. You have to do the y value for the range. Good. Negative four. And I actually shouldn't be putting a parenthesis because isn't there a dot there? Yeah, so you should have that bracket. Mm -hmm. And then how far up does it go? Positive, to positive infinity? Exactly. Because it's forever with the parentheses. Good. So now this one. Now it's telling me the same thing. Find the domain and range. But this time it tells me the vertex is 1, 3. So this little peak here has got 1, 3. So then what is the domain here? Remember, left to right, and these are x's, right? So how far left does it go? It's going... Negative. It's going to the negative side, so negative infinity forever. Yeah. How far to the right does it go? Same thing, positive infinity. Positive infinity. Now let's do the range. Those are y values, and they're from the bottom to the top. So how far low does it go? Oh, I shouldn't put that. But how far low does it go? We don't know. It's going down, 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 yeah. down, down forever, right? What's down there? Infinity. Negative infinity. Negative infinity. I'm sorry. So parentheses automatically, right? Then how high does it go? I mean, should it be parentheses if we got a closed dot up there? Well, the infinity should have parentheses. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. copy that. Oh, so it's going up to uh, positive three. Uh huh, positive three. Put the bracket because it's got a closed right, dot. Right, because you got a closed dot. Good. Those were not bad compared to all the graphing stuff, right? <laughs> so just remember left or right and X's for domain, and then bottom to top. And you're talking about y values for range.